Hey everybody, I'm so glad you tuned in. This is episode 11, and I know at the time that you're probably watching this, you haven't seen episode 10. It's recorded, it's produced, it's coming soon, and you'll see it. But I wanted to do a special quarantine edition so that we can get out of the drama of the global pandemic. So welcome to Immortal Branding. My name is Cam, and we're going to have a lot of good optimism in this conversation. First, I want to tell you that the following contains graphic content that might be inspirational or motivational, so viewer optimism is advised. I want to look ahead to day 21. You know, one of the things that we're seeing is a downturn in the global economy. We're seeing a downturn in our personal economy. And for small business owners, business owners in general, this is a trying time. But I'm confident that we can do this as a nation, we can do this as a global community, and we will survive this virus and get to, through it together. But over the next few weeks, we have an opportunity to position ourselves, to plant our feet on solid ground so that when this is beginning to subside, we have the momentum that we need to come out. And it's always best to start out with a plan because hope is not a strategy. So let's talk about putting a plan together for the next two to three weeks that can help position your personal brand and your business brand for momentum and success as we come out of this global pandemic. Number one, and this is a good one. I want you to think about updating your resume or your CV. You know, at the beginning of the month of March in 2020, we were seeing job um, rates at an all-time low, historical low. And in the last two weeks, really by the middle of March, we are now approaching almost 3 million jobless claims. Almost all of the gains that we've had in our economy over the past decade have been wiped out by this global pandemic. But I want you to take heart in understanding that regardless of what your situation may be, whether you're currently laid off or where you've currently lost a job, this is the perfect time to start rethinking your resume and updating it. Even if you have a job and you're still getting paid, the market is about to become hyper competitive as people are looking for new talent to refill positions to get back up and going. And so now's the time to make sure that any skills you've learned in the past three years, any roles that you've done in the past three years, that that is reflected in your present and current resume. A lot of people haven't written resumes or updated their resume since the last time they got a job. So this is the per perfect time to really think about that. And I'll give you a couple of things to put into perspective as pro tips. Write two resumes. Um, these days, um, there are applicant tracking systems, or which are basically automated systems that use a form of keyword search or artificial intelligence to review resumes. So you need one resume to make sure that you can get through the automated system. And then think about creating the second resume that you can either hand deliver or email to a potential hiring manager so that they can see what you're really cracked up to be and how great you'll be and how significant a fit you'll be for their organization. Along with resumes, we bring in number two. Number two is thinking about updating your profile bios across all of your social media platforms. You know, you should really look at and make sure that you have the same language and the same voice across all of your profiles, that you're speaking the same way and have the same focus, but also look and see if you have a call to action on those bios. Give people a reason to do more than just go to your profile and check out what you're about, but give them a call to action. And while follow me or subscribe is a call to action, you need to create content to give them a reason to follow you. But this is a great time to update those bios, especially those obscure bios that you probably don't check in on often. Go and do a search on yourself. Make sure your brand reputation is consistent across the board. 
And that brings us into number three. While you're looking at updating those bios, it's a great time to get a new headshot and make sure that you're thinking about your personal visual brand across all of your specific profiles. The headshot is so important because it introduces you to any prospective client, customer, or even employer. It introduces you to your suppliers. It introduces you to your buyers and partners. So update your profile. If you've got all of your profile shots with a phone, ugh, this is a great time for you to connect with some professional photographers. A lot of them are sitting idle right now. And so if you can reach out to those photographers and say, hey, are you working on your portfolio? Are you updating anything with new looks, new styles? I would love to get a digital from you. This is a great time to connect, tune in, and get a look that you're, you are going to love, I guarantee you. So, and keep it the same profile across same headshot across all of your different profiles because understand that when you're building a brand brands great brands are about cohesiveness and discipline so don't have random pictures across all of your different profiles be consistent so that people can build trust and assurance that you are who you say you are across all of your different profiles and with that being the case that brings us into number four and that is, it's time to refresh your digital portfolio. That's right. Look at the images and the work that you have in your portfolio. Are they up to date? Do they reflect who you are, what you've been doing recently? New capabilities that you have in your portfolio. This is a great time to, to think differently. If you're a photographer, it's time to start working on video. If you're a videographer, it may be time for you to start incorporating motion graphics or design. If you're a designer, go bold. But one of the big things that I will encourage you to think about is that right now there are other creatives just like you sitting around doing absolutely nothing. But if you can get um, someone to connect with, collaborate with, do it safely, keep your social distance, no groups of more than 10, um, you can get in the intersection of creating something bold and new and distinct to take your portfolio to the next level. So why not take advantage of this downtime to do something amazing, okay? Now, this one I love. Number five, you've got time to upskill. That's right, time to upskill. As we think about all of the um, work that's going on with the, the first four that I mentioned, this one is great for all of my beautiful introverts and my introverts at heart. It's a great time for you to take, think about learning skills and domains that are new to you and completely disparate from what you're doing, or to take the skills in your present domain up to mastery, get them up to the next level so that you're more competitive in your discipline. I would even look at expanding into new disciplines, and there are plenty of places where you can do that with great online courses and certifications. You can look at LinkedIn Learning, you can look at Creative Live, you can look at Super Bryce Education. There's so many places that are helping people upscale right now. This is a great time for you to take advantage of any deals and upgrade your skills. Now, there's a lot of stuff that's free on YouTube, but I would encourage you to look in a place that you might not think of, and that is your local library and look at all of the resources from books, videos, and maybe subscriptions that your local library has to upgrade your skills. And that's everything from learning how to use Office um, 365 to building a website or even learning photography. Lots of great things that you can see and learn there. Now, that brings us to number six. Dun, 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 dun. Rewrite your about page. I know the dreaded about page. Everybody hates it. Everybody is like, I don't want to talk about myself. I hate talking about myself. So flip it. You don't have to talk about yourself. Make it instead of writing about you, tell me what you're about. Let me know how you can serve? How? Why should anybody hire you? Why should anybody want to do business with you? So how do you serve? What service do you provide? And that's something to think about when you're writing an about page in general. Instead of it being self-serving, make it about service. 
Number seven. Now this one is personal and I'm speaking to myself. This one is for Cam. It may not apply to you, but it applies to me in a rich way. And that is publish those email newsletters. And I'm not saying just simply update your content across all of the email newsletters, but think strategically about how you can sequence those email newsletters so that they roll out towards building up your audience, nurturing your um, customers, nurturing your clients, bringing them through so that they're ready to make a buying decision, but also segmenting your audience. I will tell you, if you're just now adding people to your email list and you haven't contacted them in years, you do want to start out with nurturing. Don't start out trying to sell people something and trying to get people to do business with you. They don't know you because whenever the last time they connected with you, you did not respond. So start out slow. Ease into it. Build up. Keep it sexy. Don't try to rush in until it's ready. Okay? Along with building an email newsletters, that brings us to number eight. And number eight is creating a marketing campaign. I get it, everyone is holding on to their coins right now. In fact, I recently saw someone pinch blood from a penny and we're in this economic downturn together. But just as I said, we are going to come out of this and you want to come out of this running. You want to come out of this ready to build back up your business and re-engage with your audience, re-engage with your market. So it's a great time now to start thinking through cleverly, what kind of campaigns can I create? And that means creating all the collateral and assets that you're going to need for that campaign now. Building out your landing pages, building out your newsletters, your call to actions, your ads, and all of the social engagement that you're going to need for that campaign. I would encourage you to think about it over the next 18 months because as we recover, the recovery is going to be slow. We've got a lot of things and a lot of priorities in the United States, a lot of priorities around the world. And so as we build back up, don't try to think everything is going to happen. Lickety split, plan for the long haul. And that long haul will help you make big ideas over the next 18 months, but be really concrete over the next three months so that at any time you're ready to come out of the gate with a three month plan whenever the economy, whenever the market, whenever the world starts to recover. You should have your first 90 days, day by day, what it is you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Number nine, update your products and services. You know, think about it this way. Is your product pandemic proof? Are your products and services, do they fall into the category of non-essential? Hmm. So if you think about it, this is a big thought exercise and we've never been here before in our lifetime and let's hope that we're not here again. But if we do come to this place again of crisis on a global scale, then we should be thinking about are our products, are our services really pandemic proof, are they recession proof, are they depression proof? Can I continue to thrive on chaos versus barely survive in the midst of chaos? So I want you to know that there are some industries right now making grand theft money during the middle of a pandemic. They are not hurting at all. In fact, their trajectory for growth is on an upward incline. They are making a lot of, lot of money and doing some really amazing things. So the question for you is, are you marketing to people in one of those industries? Do you know those industries? And that can help you get insight to how you can reset your product product and service portfolio to make sure that you're catering to audiences that are pandemic proof and that are still spending versus still pinching pennies. Number 10, this is a favorite of mine um, about becoming a content creator because there are four, four C's when I think about content. There are content consumers, content critics, content creators, and content curators. And the critics, History never remembers the credit. Your consumption, however, doesn't necessarily create value for you, unless, of course, your consumption is upscaling. So we'll put that one caveat into the conversation. But 
For value creation and brand building, you either need to be a content curator or a content creator. One of my friends, colleagues, and fellow business owners, Omar Ramos, is constantly putting out new content that he is curating from different sources of the internet and sharing that with his community to keep people informed on what's happening, on the things that he finds as significant. And because he only puts out the things he finds that are significant, it is not spammy, it is not uh, noise, it is salient information that drives conversation. And that's ultimately his goal, is not to just curate, but to create a conversation for a creative community. And that is a part of his brand, and it's one of those cool things that you can take a lesson from and learn. I, on the other hand, am more inclined to content creation. I love the thought process of creating new content because personally for me, it helps me to hone in on skills that I'm building as well as knowledge that I have assimilated. And as I share it with you, it helps me build mastery. So teaching builds mastery of the things that you learn. And that's always a great practice to think about. But it all, at, at the same time that it helps me uh, focus on my new skill development, new knowledge creation, it also hopefully creates new value for you. And these are essential for curating and creating or essential for brand building skills, both for your personal brand, your business brand, your corporate brand, your product brands. You should be thinking about that. So now is a great time to start to write your book. Uh, author that course you've been wanting to teach, start your channel, publish that blog or podcast. Just remember, there is a difference between saying something and having something to say. And then finally, we come to number 11. I always love to give you with a bonus out of my list. And number 11 is reconnect with your old colleagues. You know, my mother taught me that friends and family sometimes can be like fish. After three days, you got to throw them out. And I, I understand how being cooped up with family and friends, loved ones for a long period of time, you've unlocked every achievement, you've binge watched every movie you wanted to um, watch, You've had every fierce conversation between one another to develop your relationship, and you've read all the books, and you're just sick and tired of each other. I get that. However, there are lots of people who live alone. Their kids are grown and gone, and their lives are centered around their work. And right now, they're not working that much. And so when your life is centered around your work and you're not having a lot of work to do, you can experience a lot of isolation. And so I would encourage you to reach out to your old colleagues, your old friends, and just find out how they're doing in life. As a benefit, a side benefit, but not a reason, they can be a great reference for you as you deal with number one of updating your resume, your portfolio, your headshot. We help you um, even get a line on a new career that you haven't thought about. So just check in and say, hey. But beyond your self-serving needs, you know, just letting people know that they exist, you see them, you're alive, you recognize that they're alive is a great thing. It has such a mutual benefit for both of you and you're gonna feel better as a result of connecting with the people that you used to know well and probably haven't talked to in a while. So that is it. That's our top 10 plus one, 11 things for you to think about and do as you go through this quarantine, whether you're self-quarantine or whether you live in a state where you have stay at home. Please people stay at home so we can stop the spread of this pandemic throughout our communities. Um, a couple of things I want you to do, maybe four. Um, first, go over to my website, sign up for my newsletter. It's gonna be awesome, I'm working on it, trust me, it's gonna be boss, and you're gonna be grateful that the things that I suggested, hinted to, alluded to in this series, you'll be able to find out more detailed information at maygrandbycam.com. Also, 
Be sure to follow my channel and subscribe so that you'll get notifications when the next new episode comes out and the missing episode 10 is on the way. And leave me a note or a question in the comments below. I love to hear from you, talk with you, find out what's going on with you in your quarantine. How are you preparing for life after the pandemic and getting back on your feet and recovering your economy? And as always, you can follow me at May Grand by Cam everywhere I am. I thank you for watching. I want you to stay safe and be well. We'll be back together soon.